Hey guys, let me know what you think by liking and commenting, and it really helps me and this channel out when you subscribe, so please click that button. Thanks a bunch! Alright everyone, today's episode is brought to you by Super Smooth Hobby Lubricants. Super Smooth Hobby Lubricants are 100% synthetic, and they come in medium oil versions, light oil, and PTFE or Teflon grease in this handy tube. These are very recent and modern formulations. The company that actually manufactures the oil and grease for Super Smooth is a very, very well-known company, and Super Smooth worked with their chemists to make sure that these would fulfill the needs of modern hobbyists. These formulas are specifically designed not to gum up, and they're designed also not to attract any kind of grease or dirt or dust. So remember Super Smooth, it's slicker than smooth. Hey everyone, if you've been watching my channel for any amount of time, you know that I absolutely love passenger trains. Love them, and one of the categories I love about passenger trains is high-speed rail. Wish we had more of it in the United States where I live, at least part-time, but um, we just don't, and we probably won't for a little while here. But if I need a high-speed rail fix, I can always go to one of our neighbors across the ponds. And one of the high-speed rail networks that I really like is Austria's. What's interesting about it is that Austria doesn't have a true high-speed rail network with dedicated train sets. They actually figured out a kind of a compromise, and that was this railjet system where they use somewhat off-the-shelf cars, the Viaggio cars, and what they do is they semi-permanently couple them together and pull them with a fast Siemens Taurus. They can get up to 230 kilometers per hour with them. And so they've sort of avoided having to pay a whole lot for dedicated train sets that only run high speed. And they can also swap out the locomotive if necessary. They don't have to rely on each car to pull itself or something like that. But I think it's a good compromise and I would love to ride on more of them. But I'll be totally honest with you, the Railjet series would be sort of a footnote for me, but it has the awesome Railjet paint job, which I think is just wonderful and one of the absolute best passenger train liveries I've ever seen and perhaps will ever see. I absolutely positively love the Railjet paint scheme and, uh, you know, it took me a while to get my hands on an entire train, but when I did, I ran it quite a bit. I still run it quite a bit because I absolutely love looking at it, and I hope to ride it more someday. And I won't lie, I also like how they made the front of the cab control car look pretty much like a Siemens Taurus. They made this thing look as an integrated whole, and boy, it's nice to see when you have probably was a pretty bureaucratic situation come out and do something like this that looks like it was designed by an individual who had a great vision. So if you want to create this, it looks like the companies that are producing rail jets right now are Rocco and Jägerndorfer. Those are the two companies that seem to be coming out with these sets, although Pico also has one out. It seems like Pico's set is kind of more for beginners. It's kind of a, um, it's, yeah, it's kind of a set that's it's lower priced. Uh, but it does have a railjet uh, model and the cars, but they're not quite as detailed or I, they're not as prototypical either, as far as I can tell. They're actually, I think, 100 scale in length, even though they're 187 in width. Um, but rock the sets that I have, and I have one for OBB and I have one for the Czech CD also, are from Rocco. Now, I think Jägerendorfer just came out with theirs, if you're interested. I don't know anything about it. I do have some Jägerendorfer cars, and from what I've seen, they do have the power couplings. I'm not sure if they're lit internally, however, but they do have power couplings. Um, I'm pretty sure that Hobby Train makes one in N scale, if that's what you want. But either way, um, Railjet, yes, if you want this awesome livery, and this is kind of the standard livery, then you've got a few options. All right, well, the other livery that I really like, and I guess Austria just has everything locked up, is the night jet. In fact, they have others. They have city jet also. Um, I'm not really as thrilled about that one, 
but certainly about Nightjet I am. Now, when it comes to Nightjet, I just started collecting these slowly over time as I found them, and when I found them for prices that I thought were reasonable. Sometimes these were new, sometimes they weren't, but even when they were used, they were pretty close to new, so I didn't have any problems buying them. So as before, you know, I fell in love with this particular livery, and I'm like, oh, I've got to have one of those trains. But by buying these piecemeal over time, <laughs> I actually got myself into a little bit of trouble, and that's, I got way too many. Um, I didn't know how many cars I needed, and I looked, and there were just all different types of cars. And sometimes I had, if I wanted a particular car, I'd have to buy the whole set. And it's not like I was just going to grab the car out of it and then try to resell the set once again. I'm like, nope, I'll just keep all of them. So that's what I did. And I ended up compiling a heck of a night jet set. Now, for those of you interesting, uh, yes, the two brands are fairly related for what it's worth, whereas Railjet is the semi-high-speed service of Austria. Railjet, excuse me, Nightjet is the night train version. But there are some distinct differences which we'll go in here. Uh, we'll go into that if you want to build your own consists, since that's what we're talking about. Now, Nightjet is the newer of the two services. In fact, it was uh, launched, I think, in December of 2016, whereas Railjet has been around since 2008. So it's almost a decade newer. And the reason they did it is because Deutsche Bahn was going to cancel their overnight service, which is called City Nightline. And I guess in Austria, they still valued that service. So they decided, oh my gosh, I guess we have to fill that in with something. And in fact, they did. So that's what we have. We have these two services now, but they do differ in several ways. And I'm going to cover that here in a moment so that you can build the train set that you want um, out of these two brands. So there you have it. Um, this was my first um, set for Nightjet. I just, like I said, I bought a bunch of different cars without a real plan. Just whenever they came up and I thought I could afford it, I went ahead and purchased them. So let's take a look at how this ended up. And what happened is, is I got this set with the Rocco Nightjet Siemens Taurus. And I, and literally, I didn't even think about this. I didn't even take them out of the box until you saw me plopping them down. And what happened was, is I had a train that was way too long, I thought. 16 cars. And here it is. All right, so it looks like the locomotive was pulling it. Didn't seem to have a problem with it, but I didn't want to push my luck having 16 cars strung behind this thing. So I took some video, but that prompted me to go look into this train more deeply to see exactly how to build one. So let's let's do that. Let's build each. Firstly, let's count the number of cars in a railjet consist. We'll have the count help us. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven. All right, looks good so far. Mine came with seven cars also when I purchased the full set, but let's try another one. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven. In fact, railjets do have seven cars in the consist most often. And the reason why this is done is because these cars are actually semi-permanently coupled together. Yes, they're not a specifically designed high-speed train set, but in a way they are because they do this to reduce sort of the slack buffeting between the cars and also to make the cars seal properly at the diaphragms. But on the other hand, these are sort of standard cars, so they're easier to repair. They don't quite have the maintenance cost of a dedicated train. And by the way, if they ever come out with this train set in model, 
couldn't stop me from giving them my money fast enough. I think it's some sort of ski appreciation model set, so I hope they do that. And yes, when they need a longer train, all they do is daisy chain them together like you see here. Now they may chain them like a lot of these where you see them sort of train, locomotive, train, locomotive, but I've seen them train, locomotive, locomotive, train. I've seen them both ways. All right, let's take a look at the night jet now. All right, um, as we see here, there's actually not this night jet locomotive, and that's because the locomotives used are whatever locomotives they have available, and the locomotives that can actually take the train through whatever country it is they're traversing, and possibly a locomotive that's required perhaps by the road that the locomotive and train set is going to travel on. So yeah, it's never going to be a set one. Let's take a look now at the uh, consist. So if you want to make the most basic night jet consist, you need seven cars. And that, if you want to create it very generically, that's what you'll do. And of course, you'll need a locomotive. I just happen to have locomotives that have the night jet paint scheme, but you'll see these locomotives hauling all kinds of trains, including freight. So you don't need one of these. I just happen to have these. You can do that and you can use the Taurus or you can use the Vectron. Um, although I think the Vectron is not slated to regularly pull the night jet either. And I'm going to talk a little bit more about this, but either way, it's cool looking. I don't care about 100% prototypicality. I just like the paint scheme. In the Netherlands, they bought these um, Siemens Vectrons to haul night jets rolling through their territory. So if you want one of those and you want to um, do things the way that people in Holland do, then you can get this particular Vectron and haul your train around. So there's another option, but you know, for night jets that are going through Italy, you may have an Italian locomotive like this one here pulling it. Okay, and I'll show you some different night jet consists here in a second. But I think the main point is you don't need to have a particular locomotive for the most part hauling night jets because they use what's available and what's required. All right, but the most basic seven car consists includes two of these. These are second class seat wagons and I if all the ones I've seen have six seats per compartment. Don't think I've seen any others, but then again, um, we're going to dive into this a little bit more. And But the ones that are branded Nightjet, I've always seen with six. Now granted, I don't live there, so I don't get to ride on these very often, but all the ones I've seen seem to look like this. So there's one. Here's a second one. Okay. Then next, what we want to do is we are going to have three couchettes or what would be considered, I guess, three roomettes uh, here in the United States. So here we go. Let's kind of see. We have a number of smaller compartments, but they have seats that are convertible into beds, whereas the coach compartment cars, they don't convert truly into beds, although a lot of them have sort of swing out footrests that make it kind of become a bed. But as you can see here, there are beds lining sort of the walls and there are ladders that you can use to get up onto the upper bunks. So three of these, there's Uno, here's Dos. It's a slightly different model, but it's the exact same idea. And all of these I have are from LS models. They're absolutely beautiful. And the only thing that stops them from being super premium is the fact that they're not lit and you have to get a kit or you have to retrofit them yourself in order to get them to light up. But anyway, there's couchette number two. And then we will have one more here. And if you notice, these are different. They A lot of times they bought out cars from different railroads, particularly from DB. And uh, they basically just put them in night jet livery and refurbish them. Here's a third one. So there you go, that is the next component. This is a newer one. This is actually the same style of car that's used in the Railjet series, although they don't have remettes. They're all their cars are seating cars. 
So we'll kind of put this one over here. I'm kind of running out of room, it looks like. And in order to finish things off, you will need two sleeping cars. So here we go. This is sleeping car, and this is an actual room car where it's designed sometimes for two or more people, but sometimes there are different you know numbers. Some are just designed for one, some are designed for two, and maybe you have ones that go more, but it's typically they're larger rooms. Sometimes they do and don't have an ensuite. It all depends. You're going to have to find out what kind of sleeper cars the train is hauling, and you're going to have to make a reservation based on your needs and how much you can afford. And there are two routes, and two routes only that I know of, at least at the time I'm publishing this, that run these really awesome double-decker sleeping cars. And you can see them on YouTube. They're really wonderful. They look very comfortable, but you can't get them everywhere only two runs run these so they're very nice but of course you know it's your train you can do whatever you want but normally you won't see just one of these running if you have this 232 configuration okay so there you have it let's go ahead and verify our seven count by looking at another night jet train here we go here's the locomotive it is from belgium and it is not a night jet, but we know that's going to happen. Here's one, two, that's coming through, three, the sleeping car, four, what is that? Wait, that's not a night jet. No, that's not a night jet at all. Looks like a seating class, but wait, where are the other, where are the other? Wait. Okay. It's in fact that even though that 232 configuration is somewhat typical, Nijet trains run whatever they need to, wherever they need to, depending on where they're going, how they're going to be split up, which cars are going where. As you can see from this Nijet passing through Amsterdam Central, it's got a gobbledygook mess of all types of cars. And again, these may be coming from somewhere else and attached, or they may be attached and they're getting separated later. It really all depends. And they, they may have just needed a particular type of car and couldn't find it. So they went and grabbed it from whatever stock they were running at the time. I mean, for instance, we can see this Nightjet train from, I think it was back in the day, I think it was a few years ago, and it is running about a uh, six hour run in Austria. And if you look, it is a Taurus, which, you know, a lot of night jets will have, but it is running 100% seating cars. So again, it's night jet. I, I don't know what time it ran, but it probably ran at night and therefore it's under, it's listed under night jet. But in fact, it does not have one single sleeper or roomette or anything on it. It's all just seating cars. So there you can see that, right, it's, it's, if you want, you could put any train together almost and call it a night jet, although people will probably start to question you. We can see there, there were night jet trains listed and they were diesel multiple units. So it really, in a way, doesn't matter if you want. You can go look up these historical night jet trains and see how they were comprised. And you'll find that if you do any kind of European modeling, then you've probably got the cars you already need. But of course, that doesn't help you if you really want to do an actual night jet branded train, then you're going to have to do something. So let's go back and create one from 2018. This is on a Berlin to Zurich run. And it looks we can put this together here. It's obviously not 100% night jet branded livery, but that's okay. We want to just make a train that existed in real life as close as I can possibly do it with what I have. So here we go. Let's take the locomotive. It's a 101 class. I don't have one of those. The closest I have is a 120, but I think it will look just fine. So let's take the BR120, set it aside. The next one is a second class seating coach, and I have the exact type of coach that was in this consist, I'm pretty sure. It looks about right. So there you go. We will put that to the side. It's nice. That's a lot of nice details on this door. I didn't even notice that now until I was looking right through the camera. All right, then we have an Austrian, I think was this inner city. I think that serves as the next seating car on there. So 
the one I have is actually a 1 100 scale length car, but it really won't make any difference. All right, the next one I have is a Rumet slash Couchette car, and I think it's the exact one. I mean, not the exact car itself, but the model that they showed in the historical image. So that one is going to go next. And the one after that is a Couchette also, and I think this is the exact one that it's the exact model or really close to the one that was in this actual train set. So there you go, you can see all the ladders. Oh, I love it when they have these types of details. So again, oh, just notice the doors. All right, and the one after that is an actual sleeper and it's one of these double decker sleepers. So there you have it. I have another video where I unbox these. So if you want to go take a look at them, please do. Again, here's the beautiful doors. The next one is another one of these double-decker sleepers. And this is one of these special Pride Vienna 2019 events, I think. Uh, let's see. The next one is... I'm going to move all these over. Next one is another roomette, a couchette. I think this is the same one they showed. Yeah, another one of these attached there. So we will plop that down next and yet another couchette. So we'll plop this on there too. And then another seating car. I think, again, this is the exact kind that they showed in the real concess. So we'll put that and another sleeper also. And I'm pretty sure this is the same one. So I've got a couple that are a little bit different, but a couple that are the same. So we will plop this down at the end. And after that, we have a Swiss SBB um, seating car also, but this is the one that has the bicycle rack on it. Now, if you look, this is a beautiful car. It has multicolored interiors. I really like this one. It has baby carriages and also bicycles in the back of it. And I'm pretty sure this was actually made as part of a night jet set. There are all the bicycles. Look at that. That's really neat. Really, really nice. Although, yes, the bicycles they have in Switzerland are very monotone color. But either way, there you go. So that should be the whole consist as shown in the historical, like I guess, consist registry. So there you have it. These ones aren't too tough to put together, especially if you're doing a rail jet. You can see my climate jet there. And... There is the train pulling out. So I'll leave these as a running session, but let me go ahead and do my summary for you. Okay, in terms of prototypicality, for the most part, you can get dead on. I mean, dead on. They make rail jets in particular, and actually they make a lot of cars from night jet that model a particular train at a particular time. In terms of cost, a lot of these, particularly the cars and the locomotives, are going to be somewhat premium, but not over-the-top premium. You can find used ones that will bring the cost down. Also, if you don't mind the Pico set and you can find those components, you can make a rail jet at least somewhat for cheaper. And also, I mean, I guess if you wanted to build a night jet that didn't have any night jet branding, you might be able to get away with making a really cheap set. When it comes to rarity, when it comes to the railjet, probably not particularly rare, but when it comes to night jet, you might find some special edition cars like the Vienna Pride Celebration ones that are a little bit difficult to get. But overall, you know, again, um, what's nice about this is you can create particularly a night jet train that is an exact train that actually may not have any night jet branding at all. So in fact, it may be very rare, but overall, I think as we go forward in the future, a lot of people are going to have night jet and particularly rail jets because they're so popular. Yeah, in terms of variations, wow, the sky's almost the limit. As I've shown you, you can slam about just anything down on the track and call it a night jet train. Uh, rail jets, uh, actually not as many variations, but I don't think people who are looking to model night jet, or excuse me, rail jet, are exactly looking for a lot of variety. They like the concept of the rail jet and the specific livery, so they're not going to be as worried about it. I know a lot of you from Europe, this is probably like second nature to you, but there are people from other parts of the world who maybe want to run these train sets, and I've been curious. Of course, the whole night jet thing confused me uh, to begin with, so I'm just hoping to clear some of that up here, and I hope it helps somebody. 
Now, one thing to keep in mind is that they are going to come out with a Mark II version of both the Railjet and the Nightjet, and it looks like they're also going to be seven-car semi-permanently coupled sets. Um, so it's going to be of a change for the Nightjet, but from what I can tell, it's only going to be on certain and specific routes. So that's something to remember. But I think those are going to start running in 2023, and I think Rocco has already scheduled... Um, models to be made for those. So I'm really looking forward to them. If you look on YouTube, you can actually see the test train sets rolling around. If you found this to be useful, hey, and I hope you did, please like and take time to comment. And as always, it really helps me out if you subscribe. I hope um, that you have a lot of fun model railroading, and I would love to hear about your experiences with any of these trains, real or model. Please leave that down in the comments below. So until next time, happy model railroading. I'll talk to you later. See you soon.